Chapter 16, Part 1 Nambo stretched out with the mealy bag for a pillow. Mother's pot was wedged into a crevice at her side. She slept heavily, without interruption. In one sense, it was the safest place she had been since she left the village. No leopards could creep on her here. No hippos would be attracted to a grassless rock. The wind died in the night, and so then did the waves. A haze blotted out the stars, and when dawn came, the sky turned a milky pink. Namho's, Namho opened her eyes briefly onto a glory of shining mist. When she finally awoke, the sun was a furious white ball in the east, the air already unpleasantly hot. Namho stood up and stretched, Hezvo, which means good heavens. She had never imagined so much water was possible. Twenty long steps took her from one end of the island to the other. Fifteen steps took her from one side to the other side. She hunkered down to consider the situation. She had tied up within sight of Zimbabwe. The river had been flowing rapidly all around her, and if the rope came loose, there was... Untied by a, a juzu, she thought uneasily. The boat would have been rapidly swept downstream. She had, sla had slept soundly. Perhaps she had sailed all the way back past the guinea fowl camp and the stream that went by the village. What had grandmother said? The, Mo the Mugunzizi River used to flow into the Zambezi River until the Portuguese dammed it up. Now the Zambezi had become a huge lake, Lake Caborabasa. You couldn't see across Caborabasa. Even crocodile guts had approached it with caution because of the great waves that sometimes arose. Namho felt slightly happier that this was a real lake and not the ghostly realm of the Juzu. Still, water spirits no doubt inhabited the place, as they did any body of water. She couldn't stay here long. That was certain. The island was barren. Her fish trap was useless without a narrow channel, and no birds ventured this far from shore. The thought of leaving filled her with dismay. The lake was calm now, but who could say how long that would last? Meanwhile, her stomach felt as its two sides were glued together. She ate more of the dried fish and drank as much of the water as she could manage. For a few moments, her belly comfortably stretched, but the sensation quickly vanished. She was afraid to eat the uncooked mealy meal, and Buya said raw flour swelled up inside and made your stomach burst. Namho laid out the matches to dry. She enrolled, she unro enrolled Mother's picture and saw that it had survived the journey unharmed. Well, Mom, she sighed, we don't have many neighbors in our new home unless you count the Juzu. I imagine there are a lot of them around here. I'll make you some tea and we can talk. Namho pretend boiled the tea and poured it into pots. She didn't have the heart to cut bread and spread it with margarine. She placed the fish trap over mother's head so she wouldn't get too hot. Grandmother told me a story once about a man who held many wives and sons let me read that again. Grandmother told me a story once about a man who had many wives and sons, but no daughters. Namho sipped her tea as though it were really hot. The man called his sons together when he was dying. I have no money to buy you wives or daughters to exchange for them, he said. All I have is a single black bull and the friendship of the Juzu who lives in the river. And I will be reading part two next week. Thanks so much for listening, you guys.